Prior to Cats, um, I'd, I'd never met Andrew. I had a very long uh, relationship with Trevor Nunn, uh, designing productions for the RSC, um, including um, a musical uh, or two. We actually did Once in a Lifetime, in which there was sort of big musical numbers added to it. And we did a production of Comedy of Errors, which was um, turned into a musical. And um, I believe that that's what drew other people's attentions to the fact that, uh, you know, we might be capable of um, doing a, a musical. Cats it seemed uh, a slightly bizarre idea. Bonkers, even. I mean, but there wasn't, um, as I recall, there wasn't, it was an idea. There was, I think Andrew had written probably five or six of the tunes um, when we were first brought into it. And it developed from that point on. I mean, we, we weren't or never had a, a finished or were never presented with a, a script. There was a, a, a notion and a series of ideas, and I had to come up with a way of presenting this visually, because it, it was always contemplated that there would be, you know, a large flat area on which people could dance and slightly rate, but, um, but also providing up and around and all over the place, um, places, the sort of places from which cats could be discovered or bring stuff to that, to that space. I think it was something, uh, a, a, a site that I passed on the A13 one, one evening um, where there was this derelict billboard that had fallen over and some scrap cars and, and um, I don't know, it just, you know, it just seemed to be like a, a, a feasible way of, of, of changing scale so that humans could play cats in, in, a, in, an env in a playground, in an environment that allowed, allowed them to improvise and, you know, like making the train or, or you know, going to the heavy side layer or whatever it was. And there would always be ways of um, changing the space to suit the moment. In the watches of the night, I was always fresh and bright. Every now and then I'd have a cup of tea. With perhaps a drop of scotch when I was keeping on the watch, only stopping here and there to catch a flea. They were fast asleep and through, and so they never knew that I was walking up and down the station. They were sleeping all the while, I was busy at Carlisle, where I met the station master with elation. Andrew did This Is Your Life. Um, he spotted the space and called Trevor up and had him rush down there and see it. And then we discovered all the other things that were inherent in the building, like the big turntable, um, you know, which one thought, well, it's about time this was put to good use. And so that whole opening sequence probably would never have existed had we not gone into that theater because it was a purpose built, huge revolve that um, had been built to uh, facilitate changing the place from a proscenium theater into a into a theater in the round it was never conceived of as a as a as a device for scene changing The thing about Broadway is, and most people's perceptions of Broadway, especially from, from England, is that there are these massive theatres. But of course they're not. They're, they're quite large auditoriums in some cases, quite deep, but very shallow stages because of the nature of them being built on blocks. So that, you know, they'd put as little of the stage as possible and as much audience as they could get before they hit the next road. Um, and the Winter Garden was um, not particularly deep, but deeper than most. But because of the nature and the shape of the auditorium, it meant that we could come out 
into the auditorium much further than would be the case with most Broadway houses. I mean, I thoroughly enjoyed doing the costumes, but um, you know, it's, it was a sort of natural process as well because it evolved very much from dance, from seeing um, the dancers in the rehearsal rooms and the things that they used. And I suddenly had the idea that you know, you could use leg warmers and arm warmers. You could use gloves and various other things and, and wigs to suggest cat-like things without it being pantomimic and sort of puss in boots stuff, you know. I mean, that would have been disaster. Um, and whenever you're trying to do something with human beings who are trying to pretend or, or trying to be animals, you have to find a very, you know, strong theatrical line to you have to really give it some style. Pastor Fred Jones is not skin and bones. In fact, he's remarkably fat. He doesn't haunt pubs. He has eight or nine clubs. For he's the St. James's Street cat. Pastor Fred Jones quite clearly is going to be in a sort of black swagger coat and spats and graying temples. No commonplace mousers have such welcome trousers for such an impeccable back. In the whole of St. James is the smartest of names is the name of this brummel of cats. And we're all of us proud to be nodded about to buy fast and for Jones in white spats. The makeup was very much to do with how the whole thing was unified in from the face through the costume, through the wig. All the guards and all the porters and the station master's daughters would be searching high and low, saying skimble, where is skimble? For unless he's very nimble, then the night mail just can't go. At 11.42, with the signal overdue, and the passengers all frantic to a man, that's when I would appear and I'd saunter to the rear I'd be busy in the luggage van When he gave one flash of his glass green eyes And the signal went for clear They'd be off at last for the northern part of the northern hem I was running around doing it all Both cutting the hair, I was cutting the wigs on the staircase of New London Rushing around to each dressing room, applying makeup to everyone, um, and spraying their costumes in the staircase as well. It was complete madness. It was very exciting. It was a lot of fun, and it was mad. I mean, I was doing all nighters and, you know, doing sort of, sort of all this costume stuff, crazy stuff going on. Andrew and, and Trevor were writing and and um, discussing at the next, the next stage. And I think that, there, you know, there was some apprehension about how it would be received. But the point was that we were just doing it. I mean, we, we were doing what we could, the best that we could. Um, probably, you know, one of the most creative periods of, of mine, Trevor, Andrew's, um, life in the theatre. Um, seem, there seems to have been an awful, awful lot that has stemmed from that and from that production. Um, 
for, for all of us. But I remember it as being, um, well, challenging and exciting and, um, and kind of nervous making. But also, you know, what, I mean, I, I suppose um, I, I hadn't been involved in, you know, the mega musical world prior to that, so I didn't have any feelings about it. I mean, it was just doing, I was doing a job and doing it the best that I could.